Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Welcome back to my channel, My Loverlies. If you've never been here before, thank you so much for clicking on my video. I am so happy you found me. I do so hope that you will like and subscribe before you leave. Become part of the Mama family. Mama's got your back, at least where makeup's concerned, and definitely when that makeup is cheap. Today is True Love Tuesday. We are talking about a very mysterious Hollywood couple today. We're talking about Ryan Gosling and Eva Mendez. Probably one of the most beautiful couples ever. They're so, oh, such beautiful, beautiful people. Very, very mysterious and very private as well. Before we get started, a very special, very warm welcome to any of those that are new to my channel. I am so incredibly happy that you are here. If you enjoy the content, I do so hope that you will mash that thumbs up button. I hope that you will subscribe if you have not already. And I hope that you will ring my bell, turn on your notifications, so that way, next time I upload a video, you can come right back here and we can hang out together again. Also, my eye makeup is done already. I am so in love with it. I am living for that contrast between the warm crease and the icy blue lid. Oh, it's given me all the feels. So, so pretty. I did make sure to film a TikTok on today's eye look if you are interested. I will make sure to have the tags for that as well as all of my other socials, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff in the description box below. Guys, if you are not following me on all my other socials, especially over on TikTok, you definitely should be. I post fun content literally every single day. And if you're following me everywhere, you don't have to worry about missing a single moment of it. As well as the links to all of my other socials, I'll make sure to put a full list of everything that I use in today's video in the description box as well. I don't usually talk too awful much about the makeup that I'm using, but of course, if you have a question about anything I put on my face today, all you have to do is leave me a comment and I will get back to you. All right, my babes, with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into the story. You guys already know the drill. I like to go in and do some backstory on each half of the whole, and then we'll go into them together as a couple. We're gonna start off with Mr. Gosling, just because there's more backstory available on him. So, Ryan was born Ryan Thomas Gosling, November 12th, 1980. If you see me looking over in this direction, it is because I am looking at my notes. Uh, they're not super, super long this week, so I don't think we're going to be here too awful long, but you know me, I like to talk. So go ahead and get you a big old glass of something to drink, get you a snack, get comfy, get cozy, and let's just get into it. So Ryan was born Ryan Thomas Gosling, November 12th, 1980. He's best known for his roles in, of course, The Notebook, which is literally what put him on the map. He was also in Drive. He was in Crazy Stupid Love. He was in The Place Beyond the Pines. He's been in a ton of movies. He's got actually a pretty extensive uh, list. Most recently, he was in the Barbie movie. Y'all, I am so sad. I still have yet to be able to go see that movie, and it makes me so sad. I keep trying to rent it at Redbox, but every single time I go to pick it up, it's like either sold out or it's not available. It's making me very, very sad. I want to see the movie so freaking bad. If you've seen it, let me know in the comments what you thought about it, because I've heard some mixed reviews. Some people said it was like revolutionary, and then other people said it was just kind of like, weren't, weren't. so I'd love to know what you think about it. He was born at St. Joseph's Hospital in London, Ontario, Canada, to father Thomas Ray Gosling, who was a traveling salesman. He worked for a Canadian paper mill, and then his mother, Donna Gosling, was a secretary. So he grew up a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and he said that the church and its teachings had a profound effect and a profound um, importance in like even the smallest of day-to-day -day tasks. He said th that the church influenced every aspect of day-to-day -day life and like in his upbringing. So they're very religious family. Uh, the church was incredibly important to them. They moved around quite a bit because his father was a traveling salesman. So that's kind of like in the job description. 
So they moved around a ton uh, until uh, his parents divorced, actually. And, you know, it's so sad, but I think his mom just got tired of always having to pack up and go and, and you know, kind of like leave at a second's notice. She just got tired of it. So they ended up getting divorced when Ryan was around 13 years old. Now, Ryan does have a sibling. He has an older sister and he and his older sister both opted to live with their mother. And after that, they had a definitely a more stable and comfortable lifestyle. Now, his older sister's name is Mandy, and he actually is quite close to both his mother and his sister. He said that growing up in a house full of women definitely influenced the way that he not only treats women, but interacts with them, uh, even as a young boy and into adulthood. It gave him a gave him a real respect for women. Uh, and he's, I, I want to say maybe, maybe not a feminist, but definitely respects and appreciates women, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing just on its own, right? Ryan absolutely detested his childhood. He disliked being a child just in general. He said it was the worst period of his life. He got bullied mercilessly as a child uh, from elementary school all the way to middle school. He didn't even make his first real friend until he was around 13 or 14. And then even after then, after, yeah, even after that, he was incredibly just socially awkward. Uh, just wasn't comfortable in his own skin, which is so crazy because he's one of the most beautiful men like ever created. Uh, what one of People Magazine's sexiest men alive, all of that good stuff. He goes on to become one of the, you know, one of the, the, like one of the best actors of the generation, just like he is such a dreamboat. And to think back on his childhood and realize that he just was so unhappy. Ugh. It's just like, ugh, it's like hard to believe. You know what I mean? But he was bullied in school. He was bullied mercilessly until around 13, 14, 15 years old. And by then he was just, and he was also kind of like a weird kid, right? Because he was so socially inept and inept, just really bad with interacting at interacting with other people. He kind of like used movies and television as a little bit of an escape. And because of this was very heavily influenced by what he saw on the television. So much so that actually one day when he was in middle school, after having watched First Blood of all things, he went to school and he brought steak knives to school and he was throwing them at children during recess mimicking what he saw in the movie. So of course he got in some major trouble for this and actually ended up getting uh, expelled from his school. And this caused a ton of problems. And his mother had to kind of come in and save the day a little bit. She ended up having to take a year off of work so that she could homeschool him so that he could further his education. <sighs> just, just a rough, rough start for this man. After this, he was kind of diagnosed informally with severe ADHD and it just kind of things kind of clicked and made sense after that. But he definitely struggled as a young child and his childhood was definitely not his favorite portion of his life. Now, he was a born entertainer and one of the one of the few bright spots in his childhood and in his life was when it was, they would have like family get togethers, things like that. He would get up and he would perform with his sister and they would either sing or dance or something like that. But this was one of his very, very favorite things to do because he got so much praise for it. He was kind of used to being, you know, a little bit of a mess up. He got into trouble quite often and, you know, was just kind of like a pain in the butt for his mom. So the praise was not, uh, it was not very common for him, right? He was used to getting kind of scolded and things like that. But when he got up and when he sang or when he performed for his family, everybody clapped and cheered and the praise was just like, it was like, it was like a drug to him, quite honestly. It was something that he grew to really kind of crave. So at a very young age, he knew that he wanted to be a performer of some kind. And that, of course, is kind of what led into him becoming uh, an actor, right? Uh, 
not only would he get up in front of his family for family gatherings, but he also performed his uncle had an Elvis Presley kind of like tribute band kind of thing. It was called Elvis. What was it called? Elvis, Elvis Perry. And he would perform with his uncle in this tribute band kind of thing. Loved every freaking second of it and very like instantly knew that this was what he wanted to do for his life. And then pretty quickly after that, uh, he ended up getting signed. He get, got a two year contract with Disney for the being a Mouseketeer. And that kind of started the ball rolling for him. Now, he also said that it seems like so, it's so crazy how much thought and time and effort some of these people put into just their everyday persona, right? Because he said that, you know, he's Canadian, right? And to hear him speak, you would never, ever think that, right? And that is because he said he really worked on losing his Canadian accent because he didn't think the Canadian accent sounded tough enough. So he actually modeled his voice and, you know, his accent and the tone, all of that off of Marlon Brando, who has quite arguably one of the most specific and kind of like tough guy voices of all time, right? Like he's the godfather. Like Marlon Brando, he couldn't have picked anybody better. But he said he couldn't he couldn't stand the Canadian accent because it just he just didn't think it sounded tough enough. And he wanted to have that definitely after getting like bullied and just picked on when he was younger. Of course, he wanted to to kind of cultivate a tough guy persona. So that never happened again. Now, Ryan dropped out of high school at 17 years old. He was just done with it. Uh, school never really held any real significance for him in uh, in the first place. He was just kind of like going through the motions. He was genuinely miserable at school as well. So as soon as he was old enough to not have to go anymore, he was like, yeah, we're done. So he quit school at 17. And of course, he quits to focus on his acting career. Now, before this, like I said, he had been signed with the uh, Mickey Mouse Club and he had been a Mouseketeer. And during this time, his mother had packed up, they had moved to, to Orlando so that he could complete this two-year contract. Now, Ryan says the two years that he was a part of the Mickey Mouse Club were two of the best years of his entire life. During that time, he was in that, uh, you know, a lot of famous kids were in the Mickey Mouse Club with him, right? We had Justin Timberlake, we had Christina Aguilera, we have Britney Spears, we have J.C. Chazé. Like there were a ton of really recognizable names. And he said during that time, he was around like-minded people. He didn't get bullied. He actually became really, really fast friends with Justin Timberlake. So much so that when his mother uh, got a kind of work emergency thing and she ended up having to pack up and go back to Canada uh, for, uh, for a work thing, Justin's mom, Justin Timberlake's mom, actually took temporary custody of Ryan so that way he could stay and continue to like be in the club and things like that, which I thought was kind of fantastic. Now, he is still friends with Justin to this day. I mean, they're not as as close as they once were, but they do still talk occasionally. And like I said, he said that part of his life was one of his very, very favorite. Ooh, I got blue. I didn't mix that correctly. Anyway, he said that part of his life was one of his favorites, like one of the best parts of his life ever. Now, fast forward just a little bit, and he has become one of the most successful actors of his time. Uh, he has been in over 66 different movies and TV roles. His films have grossed worldwide over $1.9 billion. That's billion with a B. So I would dare to say that he has become quite successful. Now, when it comes to Ryan's dating life, he is, he's never been one to shy away from the ladies. He definitely has charisma. He's got charm and he has never really suffered with an inability to uh, charm a lady, right? So he has his, he's had his fair share of romances throughout his career. Now, he also entered Hollywood when he was so young that uh, a lot of his romances have been pretty well documented. Like, documented in the fact that we kind of know that they happened, 
but he is such a private person. He is such a private person. He's kind of a stickler for it, uh, honestly, and it's only gotten worse as he's gotten older. So while we know that they dated, we really don't know much more information past that point, which makes me very, very sad. I really love a good bit of like some juicy information especially on like the dating history. It's like my favorite part of these videos, finding out who dated who and who was with who. I just think it is so interesting. However, uh, though I know the who, I don't really know the when, the why, the where, the how, that part of it. So one of his very first Hollywood romances happened and we're gonna start basically when he became kind of like a household name, just because he really wasn't on the radar before that point. Now, the role that really gave him his his breakout role, really put him on the mat, map, was Murder by Numbers. And it is a super old movie, and he co-starred in it with Sandra Bullock. And I think this is probably my favorite pairing of his, just because it is so incredibly unexpected. I love Sandra Bullock. I talked about her and Jesse James a couple of weeks ago, probably a couple of months ago now at this point, but I do not like that man. Jesse James is just an awful, awful, awful person. And he was awful to Sandra Bullock. But before she met Jesse James, she met Mr. Ryan Gosling. Her and Ryan were such a cute freaking couple. Like I said, really, really unexpected. And it really caused a lot of drama. So they star together in this movie and they connect almost instantly. There is a raw kind of magnetism between the two of them and you can definitely tell like they just had chemistry together so they start dating and they keep it very very low profile for as long as they can but eventually somebody figures it out and outs them as a couple and it caused so it was such a scandal because sandra is 16 years older than ryan right now it's just, it's just not fair. But kind of like the fact of the matter is that if Sandra had been a man and she was 16 years older than Ryan, like it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But for some reason, because she's the one that's older, it was like this big kerfuffle in Hollywood. And honestly, Ryan and Sandra, neither, well, neither one of them really gave, uh, you know, like they, they just didn't care. They didn't care. They enjoyed each other's company. And again, not a lot is known about their relationship. We know that they dated for around a year, uh, plus or minus, but, uh, the Sandra taught Ryan a lot during that time. Uh, you know, Ryan at this point is basically a kid. He's basically a baby at this point in time. And he's just kind of like, go, go, go. He's kind of like, you know, he's a kid. In a new situation, uh, new to fame, things like that. And she kind of took him under her wing, kind of told him, like, just enjoy the moment, calm down, just kind of relax. And I love that. He said that he learned more in his, during his relationship with Sandra that he did in a lot, almost all of his other relationships combined. She, he said she really taught him how to just slow down and really relax and enjoy the moment. And I love that for him. Now, there was a very, very, like, short-lived rumor right before the news of Ryan and Sandra's relationship that he was in a little bit of a hookup situation with an actress by the name of Casey LeBeau. That's never been substantiated either, so we don't know if that is true or not. Uh, if it was true, we're, I'm thinking, because they were kind of spotted out a couple times together, like eating lunch and things like that. I'm thinking what really happened is they were probably more friends than anything. And the tabloids, the media was just kind of looking for something juicy to report on because again, it was never substantiated, but they were kind of, uh, they were pictured out hanging out and stuff like that a few times together. Now Ryan's never said anything about it and we've, there's never been a comment from Casey either. So it's genuinely just pure speculation, but I figured I'd put that little tidbit of information in there anyway. Another super unexpected freaking love connection. This Ryan is nothing if not surprising. He is nothing if not unpredictable. And this next pairing, I love almost as much as him and Sandra. So then there was 
Oh, please forgive me if I do not pronounce her name correctly. But then there was Famke, Famke Jansen. You guys will know her as being Dr. Jean Grey from X-Men. I freaking love her. She is such a freaking powerhouse. She is this super tall. She's like this Russian super tall. I remember her in the movie I Spy. You remember that movie with Eddie Murphy and Owen Wilson? She played the Russian kind of like bad chick. Loved her in that movie too. Super tall, really, really gorgeous. Just kind of like a, like a, a bombshell, kind of like a sex kitten kind of thing, but like smart as well and super tough. Love her. Anyway, he is in a relationship with her, which I think is super unexpected as well. It's just one of those pairings that you just wouldn't assume. Like you just wouldn't peg them to be together, but somehow it kind of works. So they were together in 2004. Uh, they were linked after they were spotted in having dinner together. They had had dinner together a couple of times in New York City. Now, the fling never really blossomed into a full romance. I think they were just having a good time together uh, at that point. I'm not sure if she, I think she is a little bit older than him as well. So at this point, Ryan is definitely enjoying the company of older women. And, you know, baby, the more power to you, go for it. Like, get it while the getting's good. But he's definitely appreciating an older woman at this point in time. Their relationship doesn't last very long because shortly after his fling with her, he gets cast in the notebook. Now, we all know what happened in the notebook. It's like every fan's like fan fiction creator's dream come true. It's like when it came to Twilight, we wanted desperately for Bella and Edward to actually be together. And then when we actually found out that they were a thing, we all lost our crap same thing. So he is cast in The Notebook, uh, co-starring with Rachel McAdams. My husband absolutely adores Rachel McAdams. Uh, you'll know her from The Notebook, Mean Girls. She's been in a ton of things as well. A very, very successful career for her uh, too. But this is the movie that put her on the map. This was the thing that made her a household name. And Y'all, their relationship was just, it was, it was kind of insane, honestly. Uh, as tumultuous and kind of volatile as their relationship in the movie was, you know, everything was kind of hot and cold, things like that. Very much the same way in real life. Uh, their relationship, they were very, very passionate about each other, but they were also, they like would butt heads continuously. They argued quite frequently but there was just something there. There was just something there, some animal magnetism, some kind of chemistry that kept them coming back for more. And they were together for a good long while. They dated from 2005 to 2007. So they dated for around two years. Uh, they had a, after they broke up the first time, they had a brief reconciliation in 2008, but like I said, it didn't really last very long. They tried. They really, really did try to make it work, but it just was not meant to be. So Noah and, oh my goodness, what was her name in that movie? I can't remember. It's because you ever try to really think about something and it's like on the tip of your tongue, but it just kind of flies off into the back of your head. Oh, it's going to irk me. And yeah, I don't remember. Anyway, it was not meant to be. Fans were really, really sad when they broke up, but just, it just wasn't working for them anymore. After that, he kind of takes a little bit of a breather, honestly. He just kind of takes a step away from kind of dating and women in general, focuses on his career, just kind of enjoys life for a little bit until 2009. In 2009, Ryan had another kind of like brief fling. This time he had another super unexpected freaking combination, right? So uh, he, in 2009, he is invited to one of his friend's weddings and he goes to this wedding and really just, I mean, he's not really looking for romance, anything like that, but also in attendance at this wedding happens to be Kat Dennings. If you don't know who Kat Dennings is, I freaking love her as well. She's been in a lot of like indie alternative kind of movies. Uh, she has a show called Two Broke Girls that I really, really love. She is a spitfire, super sarcastic. Just I love her to pieces. But again, a very unexpected pairing uh, with Ryan Gosling. But they were they were kind of serious. Now, 
their relationship is a little bit difficult to kind of read and really peg just because on top of him being super private, things like that, there's just not a whole lot known about it. However, uh, there have been comments and quotes made by friends and people who know the couple who have said that they actually got pretty serious with each other. Uh, for some reason or other, things just ended up not working out and they eventually went their separate ways. But it definitely was more than just a hookup situation, but not like a fully dating, fully committed kind of thing. So it was somewhere between a situationship and a relationship. Just that weird kind of gray area. But they both enjoyed their time together however short it may have been. It was only for a couple of months, I think. Yeah, in 2000, in late 2009, just for a couple of months. But they both went on and like kind of uh, found, went on to bigger and better things kind of. Kat, I think she went on to get married, I believe. And then we know Ryan did. Now, lastly, but definitely not least, we have Blake Lively. And Ryan and Blake Lively. So I think it is so funny because Blake went from dating Ryan Gosling to then dating Ryan Reynolds. And then Ryan, of course, became Blake's uh, for, forever. I have also done a True Love Tuesday on Blake and Ryan Reynolds. Uh, I think that was a couple of months ago at this point as well. Really, really fantastic True Love story. Their, oh, my hair is just getting all over the place, but their love story, absolutely adorable. Love it so, so much. But her and Ryan Gosling had a very, very short but fairly passionate affair. Uh, it was it was honestly just fun. There was no real intent for this relationship. They just got together because they were attracted to each other. And they just enjoyed each other's company until something better came along. They ended up going to, I think, a couple of premieres together. She went with Ryan to his Blue Valentine premiere. And then after that, they just kind of split up. That's when she met Ryan Reynolds. And, you know, things just kind of like they just split apart. But it was a brief but very passionate, very kind of like blip on Ryan's dating history. And then after Blake is when Ryan was cast in The Place Beyond the Pines. That is when he met Eva Mendez and he found his forever missus. So I did forget to mention that right before he met Eva Mendez, Ryan had a very short relationship with actress Olivia Wilde. And I think it is so funny. We're going to get into it here in just a second. But Hollywood really is such a small town for it being such a big world. It is such a small town and everybody really does know everybody else. It's so funny. But he had a very short fling with Olivia Wilde. They went to like the aquarium and had a couple of dates together, but it kind of fizzled out right after it began and really didn't go anywhere. And then we have Miss Eva Mendez, who is quite possibly one of the most beautiful women to have ever walked the earth. She is absolutely stunning. She is, she is my definition of a perfect woman. She's just absolutely beautiful. Love her so, so much. She was born Eva de la Caridad Mendez, hoping I said that with some kind of correctness. She was born March 5th, 1974. She is six years older than Ryan. So he is continuing that preference for older women. Ryan definitely prefers a woman that can teach him a little something, something. We love that. Uh, you do you, baby. Love that for him. Love that for her. Uh, best known roles include Hitch, which was a good movie. I liked it. Uh, Ghost Rider, which I freaking loved. Everybody absolutely hated that movie. I didn't understand it though. Uh, like I didn't understand why people hated on that movie so much. I thought Ghost Rider was fantastic. I freaking adore Nicolas Cage though. I think he is so, so funny. I am so glad that he's like back in Hollywood now and is starting to be in more movies and stuff now. I missed that man. He's freaking fantastic. She was in Girl in Progress, which to date I think is probably one of her most involved and well-developed character roles ever. Like a lot of times, unfortunately, she gets typecast and she's usually just kind of like the pretty face that's like just kind of like intermingled in between all of the action. But in Girl in Progress, she really got to spread her wings, try out her acting chops a little bit uh, and really dive into like really bring a character to life. Now, her character in that movie is equal parts like you feel you feel bad for her and you feel sympathetic, but you also kind of want to hate her just a little bit. 
she plays a teen mom who like gave birth really really young and is just kind of fumbling around trying to figure out parenthood and just making a ton of really bad uh, decisions along the way definitely a movie worth watching though if you haven't seen it uh, she also was in uh, too fast too furious that was the movie that really put her on the map and really got her noticed she was in she's been in uh, quite a few roles uh, nothing super big like she's never been like a super leading woman she had her moment there I want to say in the early 2000s but then after that she kind of fell off a little bit uh, she was born in Miami, Florida to Cuban parents. Her mother was named Eva Perez Suarez and then her father Juan Carlos Mende Mendez. Her parents split very shortly after she was born. Uh, just, you know, problems, just having problems. Uh, and she actually, uh, of course, went and lived with her mother. Her mother moved back to Los Angeles to the neighborhood of Salt Lake and that is where Eva spent the majority of her formative years. Now her mother was a she worked at the Man's Chinese Theater in LA and then later on she worked for an aerospace company while her father owned a meat distribution company. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Maybe he was a butcher something like that. Now, she does have a pretty decent relationship with her father. Again, not a ton of information about it, unfortunately. I really do like to kind of dive into family dynamics. I think family dynamics have a, they play a giant role in how you're formed and decisions you make as you get older. But unfortunately, there's not a lot of information about hers out there. Uh, she does have quite a few siblings as well. Uh, she has an older brother, Juan Carlos Mendez Jr., who sadly died of throat cancer in 2016. She also has an older sister, Janet, as well as a younger half-brother on her father's side named Carlos Alberto Mendez. Now, after she goes to school, she completes uh, her middle school, high school, all of that stuff. She goes on to college and she studies marketing. And this is, you know, she's, you know, this is kind of like her backup career. But at this point, she already knows that she wants to model. She wants to be in movies. She's definitely, she's got the looks for it. She's got the face for it. She's got the personality for it. So she kind of goes for it. She ends up dropping out of college to pursue her career, like her modeling career. And then eventually she's in a couple of music videos. I think she was in a music video for Will Smith. She was in, she was in a bunch of stuff, but just kind of like a, a background character. And it really took a while for her to get a, a main character role. Uh, she was eventually discovered when a talent manager saw her picture in one of her friend's portfolios. She had done a photo shoot with one of her friends and the manager that was looking at the friend's portfolio was like, who's your friend? We like her, bring her in. So they do and she gets signed and then she was eventually cast in a straight to DVD uh, film, horror film called Children of the Corn, Fields of Terror. And I just feel like those super cheesy horror films, like a lot of actress, actresses and actors, they kind of get their start there. It's just awful. Like my husband loves them though. He loves those super cheesy old school kind of horror movies. I honestly can't stand them. I'm not a big horror movie junkie anyway though. But that's where she gets her start and her career is like it's it's just slow going. She gets tiny roll after tiny roll and she, you know, and she, she's just, it's not going as quickly as she wants it to. So then she decides to really invest in it, right? And she starts taking acting classes, things like that, really trying to improve, you know, improve her talent, right? She's just trying to work on her craft. Eventually in 2001, she gets her, like her, her big break, honestly. And she is cast as the mistress of a corrupt cop opposite Denzel Washington in training day. And this is the one, this is the, this is the thing that like she gets her foot in the door, right? Cause after she gets this very tiny little role, cause it is a very tiny little role in the movie, but it gets her face out there. And after that, the door kind of swings open for her and she starts getting offers. This is when the, the, the roles start coming in. 
Still nothing leading lady-esque, but she's getting work now. She's getting roles and uh, even a little bit is, you know, a lot to her, especially when her career has been so slow going up until this point. After that, uh, things kind of blow up for her. She gets cast in Once Upon a Time in Mexico with Antonio Banderas. She gets cast in Too Fast, Too Furious at, you know, Ghost Rider, all of that thing, all of those movies. And she kind of has her like five minutes of fame. Now, acting is not her only her only talent. She also models. She's been the face for quite a few different campaigns. She worked with Revlon on their campaign to raise awareness and funds for breast cancer. She worked with PETA's anti-fur campaign. She was the face of Calvin Klein's secret obsession perfume. She's worked with Pantene. She, she's worked with Terry Mugler. Like, She's been there. She's done that. Uh, and she still continues to work. Uh, she does a lot more in like ad, like ad sales, things like that. Uh, she hasn't been in a movie, I don't think in a good long while, but she's still there. She's still working. She's definitely still a part of Hollywood. Now, another kind of like tidbit that I had no idea about was she actually in 2009, 2008, in 2008, she actually checked herself into a rehabilitation program. This was something that I had never known about. It's not something I think that was ever like in the media or anything like that, at least not that I remember, but, uh, and it was for alcohol addiction problems. Now she has no history of alcohol or substance abuse issues, things like that. And quite honestly, the only reason she checked herself in, in the first place is because it was like more of like a preemptive kind of thing. She saw herself kind of sinking in to enjoying, you know, an alcoholic, an alcoholic beverage a little bit too much. And she enrolled herself in before it became a problem, which baby, like as somebody who is still actively recovering from an addiction, just recognizing the problem can sometimes be the absolute biggest step, just kind of like admitting it to yourself, you know? So it was a preemptive kind of thing for her. So she checked herself in to the, what was it? The Cirque Lodge in Utah in 2008. And she did the program, she completed it. And then after that, it just wasn't an issue anymore. But it was something I didn't know and thought it would be a fun little factoid to tell you guys. Now, when it comes to Eva's dating history, it is dang near non-existent. This woman is quite possible. She definitely prefers to be in a relationship. She is not the kind of girl that just goes out and has flings and like just kind of like she is very selective. She is very, very selective and she dates with intention. There are only two relationships that I know of before she meets before she meets Ryan. The first of which was with a music producer. He was, uh, oh my goodness, with a Peruvian music producer by the name of George Augusto. And she was with him for nine years. She was with him for a very, very long time. And yeah, I'm not exactly sure why they broke up. Honestly, I tried to find some, any kind of information on it. And again, just like Ryan, she is a very private, private lady. She does not want her business out there for everyone to know. And, you know, we got to respect it. Uh, we don't really have a choice as much as I would like all of the juicy gossip. It's just, we just don't know it. Uh, but she was with this man for a good nine years and they broke up kind of suddenly, honestly, uh, they were together for a very, very long time. And, uh, I'm not sure if he, sh like, she was just ready for a commitment, but she has said on multiple different occasions that marriage is not one of those things that she is super invested in. She thinks that it's a little bit of an antiquated, antiquated kind of constitution. She was like, people married for land. Like we don't need to do that anymore. So she's really not interested in like marriage and the ring, things like that. So I'm not quite sure other than maybe commitment issues, something like that. Maybe he was a cheater. I'm not exactly sure why they busted, but they did. After nine years together, they dated from 2002 to 2011. And then after that, she just kind of like, I think she just needed a rebound. She just kind of wanted to get, you know, back on the scene, get her, get her, her groove back. Have you ever seen the movie How Stella Got Her Groove Back uh, with Angela Bassett? 
<laughs> it's got Angela Bassett and Tate Diggs in it as well. Baby, um, baby. That is probably one of the best freaking, like, just like feel good girl power kind of movies. Freaking love it. If you've never seen that movie, go find it. You will th you can thank me later. Such a good movie. I watch that at least two or three times a year. One of my very favorite movies of all time. Anyway, it's also got Whoopi Goldberg in it. I freaking love Whoopi. Whoopi's, Whoopi is amazing. Going off on a tangent. Anyway, after she breaks up with Mr. Peruvian music producer man, she gets into a very short, very, like, very, very much a rebound. She goes into rebound mode. And at this point, this is when she meets Jason Sudeikis. And he becomes her rebound of choice. Now, this man knows that he's a rebound. And uh, I don't think he really cared. I just think that he was uh, thanking his lucky stars that he was even able to be in, in Eva's presence for the millisecond that he was. I know I would be just, just to even look at her in, in the flesh for like 10 seconds. I don't know. Probably would melt my eyeballs with her beauty, but it gets into a very, very brief situation. So like it's just a little bit of a rebound fling with Jason Sudeikis. But the reason I say Hollywood is such a small town, even though it's a pretty big world is that Jason Sudeikis actually went on to marry Olivia Wilde, which I think is so crazy. Just, it's just, everybody has dated everybody. It is so funny. And then that's about it. Uh, after she kind of like ends her fling with Jason, that is when she gets cast in The Place Beyond the Pines. And this is where Eva and Ryan meet for the first time. And the rest is kind of history. Both Ryan and Eva are fiercely protective of their privacy. And because of this, they are kind of notoriously known as the most secretive couple in Hollywood right now. Like they might not be the biggest, like the most high profile. I mean, they might now because the Barbie movie just came out and Ryan's a pretty big deal at the moment, but they guard their privacy fiercely. And with, you know, they're just, they're savvy about it. They're smart and they're savvy about it. And like, y'all, they've been together for, I want to say 12 years at this point, And they've only been photographed together twice. One of which is, was at the premiere of the movie that they worked on together. It was the only picture I could find of them together. And it's honestly probably in the thumbnail for today's video because I could not find pictures of them together. It's insane. They're so fiercely protect protective of their privacy and they, they work very hard to kind of separate themselves from each other. Like they don't want to be known as a couple, like they just want to each be like their own person. And I can completely understand that because, you know, sometimes you can kind of disappear and instead of just being a separate person, you can just be like half of the whole. And, uh, you know, I can understand how you might not want that to happen. So as much as I don't like it, especially for True Love Tuesday, I can definitely respect it. So they met on the set of the place beyond the pines in august of 2011 uh the chemistry between the two of them was instant and intense like just an instant almost feral i want to say kind of attraction between the two of them and they're just like they i don't i don't know it's kind of like the lord was like this this is gonna happen this is gonna happen right now it's like they met and they instantly just knew that this this was like supposed to happen so they work on the movie. The The movie is about, the movie is about a very dysfunctional family relationship, right? So all throughout this movie, they are kind of play acting at being, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? They like love each other, but their relationship is really hard. They have a child together. They're trying to figure out how to co-parent. They're trying to fall in love. And as often happens in these situations, the online or the on-screen kind of love story, those kind of dynamics kind of roll over into real life. And Ryan has said in like one quote that I found in one interview out of a million where he doesn't say anything about her. But he said one quote about how they were filming and they would get done filming and he would sit there and think to himself that, man, I would just, I wish this wasn't pretend. And that was new for him. That was a new feeling for him. Like they would say cut and he wouldn't want to stop. Like he wouldn't want the feelings that he was experiencing and things like that to come to an end. And at that point he knew that there was definitely something special going on with his relationship with Eva. 
sadly they are notoriously some of the most private people one of the most notorious couples for privacy in Hollywood, so we really don't know much about anything. However, at the premiere for The Place Beyond the Pines, they were photographed together at this point. They did kind of let it be known that they were together and they were an item. And like I said, it's one of the very few times they've ever been uh, photographed together. Now, it's also one of the very few times that Eva or, or uh, Brian, has made a comment about the other like a yeah like a public comment and she actually said to say he's the greatest actor I've ever worked with would be an understatement and it's very succinct it's very to the point but I think there is a wealth of emotion and a wealth of meaning behind the statement like you don't always have to go into this big long like diatribe of like you know your undying love for somebody sometimes just just that is enough now, by September, before the movie has even premiered, they've got, they've just got done filming. They met in August, right? So the next month, they were spotted smooching at Disneyland, holding hands and being flirty. And then the next month in October, they were busted making out at a stoplight in Hollywood. So like at this point, they are definitely a couple and uh, the media is kind of losing their, they're kind of going gaga because Ryan is a pretty hot commodity at this point, and so is Eva. Like, she's coming off of her high of, like, all of the, like, Ghost Rider, all those movies. Like, she's she's pr a pretty big name at that point in time. Ryan is definitely, like, he's, he's on his way up. So the media is very, very interested, but they just kind of shut that down. They shut it down, and they're just, they're not giving anything up. A little bit later, they fly to Paris together and have their first kind of, like, a dating moon together I guess they go spend a little bit of time abroad together and by the time they get back like it's done like they are they are they're together like there is there's there are two peas in a pod at this point and then it is time to meet the parents so first Ryan goes home to meet Eva's parents and her parents absolutely her mom absolutely freaking loves Ryan she is totally into him she like 100% on board so then Ryan takes Eva home to Canada to meet his mom and Ryan's mom Donna is an instant freaking fan of Eva and you know Ryan's kind of like he's getting a little bit older at this point and uh, Donna is a little bit more of a traditional kind of lady and she is very ready for her son to settle down and start having some grandchildren like she's re she's she's ready for like the ball to get rolling and her and Eva are on the same exact page so of course Donna is just like she is instantly and immediately just team Eva team Eva and then Eva has said uh she said later that the minute like the the family situation got sorted out that's when she knew that they were going to last family is very very important to her and she needed to know that you know she didn't want to have like this horrible like monster in law situation nobody really wants that it makes having a relationship with anybody just incredibly difficult so once they met the folks and re you know realized that the interfamily relationships were going to be a breeze like that was when she knew like this this was going to be her absolute forever now, remember, keep in mind, y'all, that all of this is done within a span of like eight months. So they met and they liter literally just jumped right into uh, being a couple. Like they didn't take any time. At, it, it didn't take them any time at all to recognize and just kind of like fully commit to each other. So not even a year after they met each other, they've already met met each other's families. They're already pretty much living together at this point. Like they're full, they're, they're pretty much married at this point without the documentation. Then they end up going to New York City for the premiere. They go to, I'm sorry, by September 2012, that is when the movie is premiered. Uh, they were living together. They attend the premiere together at the Toronto Film Festival. And then they and then they attend the American premiere in New York City together. And that is one of the very last times that they are photographed together. After that point, they are very much their own people. Like they're together, but publicly it would almost be, it's almost like they don't even freaking know each other. Now they take their time and they enjoy their time together. They enjoy, you know, being a new couple, things like that. 
but they are very, very serious about each other. And two years later, they start building their family. They add their first addition. Uh, almost two years to the month, literally two years to the month from the premiere, Eva gives birth to their first child, a daughter named Esmeralda Amanda in September of 2014. Neither Ryan nor Eva had ever planned on being parents. Uh, and this is like, this is one of those things where when you meet the right person, like things just kind of fall into place because they had both uh, previously before meeting each other been like uh, pro, like they had been child free, decidedly child free. Like they didn't have anything against children, but really didn't see the necessity in it. They didn't. Eva wasn't, you know, like there was no biological clock that was ticking. Eva wasn't trying to like, you know what I mean? Like there was no rush on it. If it happened, it happened. If it didn't, it didn't. Uh, she really had no desire to have children. She said, but then when I met Ryan, she was like, then it made sense for me to have not just kids, but his kids. She said the desire was very specific to him. And I feel like that is what happens when you meet the love of your life. Like your, your whole kind of like stance on on life just in general, it just kind of like, it changes, right? And she goes from wanting to be single and carefree and child-free to wanting to build something, uh, like build something with this man, right? She wanted to have his babies and she does. She has their first daughter. They name her Esmeralda Amanda. Uh, then in April of 2015, Ryan makes his directorial debut with the, with his Lost River and that was the first time that they, him and Eva worked together since they met in the place beyond the pines. And I think that was the last time that they've worked together as well. And then a year after that, in May of 2016, they welcomed their second beautiful baby daughter into the world. They named her Amanda Lee this time. Then shortly thereafter, marriage rumors started swirling. Now, even until like, even at this point, as I'm recording this, we don't know for sure if they're actually freaking married. They are so secretive about all of that stuff that we are still at this point genuinely not aware if they're actually married or not. But marriage rumors start to swirl. They're kind of like wondering what's actually what's like actually going on here. But neither Ryan nor Eva ever uh, they don't ever acknowledge the rumors. They neither confirm nor deny. So it kind of just gets like people just kind of leave it alone for a minute and the rumors get buried for a little while. Says Ryan and Eva are always very careful not to even mention each other in public. Maybe hoping people were, will forget that they're together. I'm not exactly sure. But when he won the Golden Globe for his performance in La La Land, which is another really fantastic fantastic movie. That one is a musical and he stars opposite. Oh my goodness. I can't remember her name, but I love her to pieces. She's adorable as well, but he was really fantastic in that movie. And he actually ended up winning the golden globe for it. And during that time, like his home life was super crazy. Like again, there is, there's nothing in the media about it. They're not being public about their, the problems that they're facing at home, but in a very rare occurrence during his acceptance speech he actually mentions Eva and he says while I was singing and dancing and playing piano and having one of the best experiences I've ever had on film my lady was raising our daughter while pregnant with our second and trying to help her brother fight his battle with cancer if she hadn't taken all of that on so that I could have this experience there surely would be someone else standing up here so sweetheart, I say thank you, which is just, oh, it's so freaking sweet. Like, and I think it makes it even sweeter because they make such a point of not addressing each other and of not mentioning each other. So that way when they do, it is just that much more impactful. But I just thought that was super, super sweet. Now, like I mentioned earlier, she lost her brother. Eva lost her brother in 2016 to throat cancer. And during this entire time that Ryan is out filming and, you know, basically working on his career, 
she's at home holding the hold she's at home holding the fort down like she is taking care of her brother she is taking care of her mother she's taking care of their child while like you know breathing life into an, a new uh being right like she is just she's basically being superwoman at this point and ryan is just completely and totally in awe of her strength and fortitude and he's just incredibly thankful for her and uh, i think that that message, right? Even just that tiny little, that tiny little couple of sentences, right? I think honestly probably meant more to her than if he would have got like got down on one knee and professed his undying love to her. I just think it was a really, really special moment. And after that, there's really not a ton of information or anything on them. Uh, Ryan is not on social media at all. Uh, Eva does have uh, a very pretty minor social media presence. She does, she makes a point never to post her children. She never posts her husband, anything like that. Uh, she, I mean, I think she does like some ads and things like that on TikTok and on Facebook, maybe mostly on TikTok and Instagram, but she never posts her children. She doesn't post, she doesn't really post her home life at all. And because of this, I think people were getting a little bit salty about it. Uh, and there was, I think somebody started some rumors about Ryan being a, uh, an absent parent and this PO'd Miss Eva off to like the nth degree. In one of her very, very rare posts she actually went on and she defended her husband now usually she just kind of like ignores all of the all of the comments and things like that but this one she felt needed to be addressed and she said i quote i don't think or talk or she said i don't talk about ryan and all the wonderful things he does as a father because i keep that part of my life private i feel it's best that i continue to disclose what i am comfortable with but not involve Ryan or my children too much. It's not about being cagey or weird. It's about staying private in a public space. Does that make sense? I certainly hope so because this is my honest answer. I just, you know, and I love that she kind of like sticks to her guns and sticks to her principles and she doesn't let anybody kind of like bully or pressure her into posting things that she's not comfortable with. Like, they're both, you know, they're both celebrities. They both live such a public life anyway, that I think that they should be able and allowed to keep some parts of their life private, especially when it comes to their children and their married life. Like marriage is difficult just as it is without involving the media and the rumors and just all that that entails. So I feel like they should definitely be able to keep that part of their lives private without catching so much flack for it, you know? And with that, my lovelies, we are at the end of today's video. I hope today's video was just as enjoyable for you as it was for me. I do so enjoy both of these individuals as a couple. I think they are so perfect for each other. Guys, if you have any recommendations or requests for who I should talk about next week, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to know who you actually want to hear about. Guys, this is today's finished look. What do we think? Do we like it? Do we love it? I will, of course, be posting finished pictures over on Instagram and Facebook. Definitely go check those out if you have an extra minute. Guys, I am so thankful that you decided to stop in and say hello today. I love you so, so very much much. As always, no filters, no fancy lighting. It is just me sitting in front of my camera telling you guys an epic love story. Hoping you guys are enjoying what I'm doing. If you did, make sure to give it a big old thumbs up before you leave. And until next time, stay safe, take care of yourselves, and remember, you're important. Bye.